Good morning. Let me start off with a provocative statement. In 15 years, 50% of all universities in the United States will be diminished, be gone. This is a direct quote from Professor Clayton Christensen who, of Harvard Business School, who coined the word innovative disruption. Uh, from his research and his later work called The Innovator's Dilemma. It's where the word disruption is used in technology to describe um, things that will happen. And um, since this statement and this quote is, is about education, let me tell you what I foresee will happen in the next 15 years. Research shows over the years that uh, when students listen to a, a sage on the stage, uh, a lecture, they retain five to ten percent of whatever they hear uh, from the professor. Th that is, if they're not distracted by cell phones or tablets. Uh, if students, on the other hand, um, work on a project with their hands, such as art or music or robots or just very working with things, they retain fifty percent. So five times more effective, five to ten times more effective than listening to a lecture. If students, uh, one student teaches another student what he is learning, the student that's teaching retains 60% because he has to have a higher mastery of the subject in order to do the gymnastics of uh, basically uh, teaching somebody else. So. I believe that uh, uh, education in a box, in a classroom with Sage on the stage is the most ineffective way of, of teaching. So let me postulate uh, what I see in the future could happen. Now, online education, most people in their mind think of, uh, you know, uh, studying in your, in, your, in your bedroom at the library at Starbucks. The education of the future will be mobile, mobile education. Cell phone, tablet, even your laptops connected to Wi-Fi or a large hard drive where it now basically untethers you from a sterile uh, learning environment and now you can go take your uh, cell phone or your tablet to the tide pools instead of marine biology. Go for a walk and study uh, fauna and biology and, and, uh, and uh, li you know, basically uh, livestock and just nature itself. Go to the art museum, study art history, art appreciation. So, I'm working on, um, have been working on for the past six years, uh, World Venturing Academy, which is a MOOC. Started two years before Coursera and three years before a couple of universities on the East Coast decided to get into the fray, uh, Harvard and MIT with edX. Basically, World Mentoring Academy has over 840 courses, right? uh, 54 languages you can learn. And uh, we're getting some very favorable ratings from our students for languages, uh, which rate just like uh, rate your professor, rates professors, uh, there is rating uh, services for uh, MOOCs, courses. So, here's how it works. Talking about uh, how colleges become less sexy to a student and to a society. So picture this. Let's say you're 17 years old. I've got a son who's 17 years old and uh, uh, he's thinking about going off to college. Now, at this point, he's already been in school 12 to 14 years if he's had head start. He's so full of school, he's just about ready to bust. If he goes to college, he's likely to get alcohol poisoning. So I say, you know, son, you can have a bridge year gap, you're sabbatical. So he decides to go work as a deckhand on a marine research vessel. Guess what? All the scientists are stuck on the ship. He has a two or three terabyte drive, costs about a hundred bucks, with all of the various different materials that he could ever use uh, for a sea, sea voyage. There's a lab just below deck. For two years, he travels the oceans. He basically challenges and takes uh, tests 
uh, the APs, the CLEPs, the DSSTs, the, all the various different uh, uh, tests. I guess his first two years of college finished. He goes off uh, after two years uh, working with people. He goes off to college as a junior with the rest of his high school classmates. Now they can brag about uh, you know, doing their spring break in Cancun. He can basically show his Instagram account with all of his uh, uh, two years of all the various different exotic ports that he uh, and the ship has uh, docked over the seven seas. He has future connections for employment. He knows what marine biologists do, and more importantly, he knows whether he gets seasick or not. Let's pick another scenario. Uh, say, my daughter, she decides, you know, to go to Lyon, France, the French cooking capital of the world, work for a five-star rated Michelin chef as a dishwasher. On her phone, she has a three-year culinary arts program completely free. During her breaks at work, she's doing Julianne cuts and all the other knife skills. After a while, the chef is going to go mezzanine. She's in France, so guess what she's got to learn? French. So on her phone, she has six years of French. Now, we have actually 54 languages. Six years of France. So she's in a work environment. She's got the, all the supports. On a day off, she catches the train to go to Paris. She goes to Louvre. She studies art history and art appreciation. She's not looking at the picture of the Mona Lisa. She's experiencing it. After two years abroad, she comes back to the brick and mortar. She goes to college. Her friends brag about doing bong hits of fraternity. She talks about parting grass off of Mykonos, getting drunk in the vineyards, having a Parisian nightlife, being a sous chef, being fluent in French, has money saved up from her work to pay for last two years of college. Okay, here's another one. I mean, I mean, literally, you could do pretty much anything. But let me give you another one. Say you want to see your, your son wants to study medicine. So he goes works uh, as a volunteer with Doctors Without Borders. Does all the sterilization, cleaning, does all that type of stuff. He has the first two years of Harvard Medical School in his phone. Of the 28 courses that we have, uh, the medical students take, we have 14 of them at this current time at medical school level. So, he's basically doing all of his research, all of his experience, actually knows what a doctor does. So that by the time he does finish his four-year program, and, uh, his undergraduate, and then goes off to medical school, he actually knows and feels and, and has patients on the, on the, you know, basically on the operating table. So here's the way it works. Another aspect of uh, the MOOC system is taking that mobile education into creative spaces. So I have developed over the past year and a half a database uh, in Google Spreadsheets which is uh, basically community uh, input of, of users that put in information of all the various different creative spaces. My third project, well of course that will be imported into layers on a on Google Maps or some type of mapping form so that you can see, oh, four blocks away is an animation program or, uh, you know, on Thursday at the Boys and Girls Club. Uh, and then uh, I call it badge map. Another aspect of badge map is this. Let's say, for instance, you take a walk with your nephew and niece and your nephew is three, third grade. So you give him your cell phone and says, you know, on this walk, what I'd like you to do is every time you see a different type of tree, just push, you know, tap the phone. Now, your other niece is uh, in fifth grade. So you give her your tablet and says, look, how many different animals live and eat the fruits of these trees? And so you could take a quarter mile walk, hike, and uh, pick up the phone from third grader and goes, oh my gosh, you found 25 of 30 animals. Good boy. Now, you know, of course, next time you've just planted the seed, he wants to find out those other five, five trees. Then you, uh, 
uh, get the fifth grader and she goes oh my gosh she's not only taking pictures and video she's also done searches to Wikipedia uh, about the various different animals and uh, what they eat and the trees that they're related to and things of that nature so basically we have experiential learning kind of like when you were a kid and you went on a field trip you can remember everything that happened on the field trip, but not what happened in class the day before the day after. Really? Do I really even have to say anything more? I, I will. You broke my arm. So here's the thing. With experiential learning, uh, project-based learning and Socratic method and greatest spaces supported by all of your content uh, basically curriculum uh, tied to your rubrics and all the various different types of things. It'll be such a robust uh, learning style. So, what do we do with the professors and teachers? We take them out of their boring classrooms and we put them into creative spaces, i.e. the professor instructors, they go work at the Hedron Collider and all the students freshmen all the way through graduates go to work on research projects and in their hip pocket they have all of their sage on the stage materials and textbooks and things of that nature so we basically the foundational material is those learning styles and the supportive material is the sage on the stage and the lectures and uh, assignments and homework and reading now my third project that finishes off the ecology of learning and adventure and things of that nature is a, a TV program called I Want to Be A. So uh, two years ago I went out and uh, interviewed three astronauts and said what could elementary school, middle schoolers and high schoolers get involved in for future space and technology? And they said hydroponics and robotics. So I went out to a hydroponics farm and I found all, I videotaped and, and uh, mastered all of the, uh, this, uh, all the fun things that you can do as a volunteer and uh, all the things that you can learn and yada yada, hands on type stuff. And uh, then I put that, all that information onto Google database uh, and then back into a map which will be an app. Uh, basically, I call it a badge map. You can go to badgemap.com and uh, take a look at a very beta, uh, at this point, uh, you know, actually just a day before my birthday, April Fools, so the 30th, whatever, whatever this date is. So, uh, the, uh, that's really cool, right? And then, so, of course, it goes, I want to be an astronaut. I also went out to a robotics uh, uh, team and did follow a team building and uh, interview people and uh, have a, all the teams in high school and middle school, uh, robot teams and their build sessions and all that kind of stuff. Really cool. Um, then I went out and interviewed filmmakers, and, uh, doctors, engineers, you know, game makers, all kinds of stuff. So that I want to be an author, I want to be a... In fact, a week from now, there's over 540 uh, authors at the Los Angeles Times uh, Festival of the Books at USC over two days. And so I'm going to go out and interview and gather material. And, uh, uh, because I'm a one-man person, a one-man team, uh, between the, uh, the work at the MOOC, which I'm pretty much doing 99% of the, of the content, and all of the data, which you know I pushed out to people, but nobody really puts a lot of information, so I spend most of my time doing the data uh, for the uh, badge map. And then, of course, the filming and editing. I'm hoping that this coming weekend I'll have some help uh, with filming and things of that nature. So I maybe have one team or maybe two teams of individuals going around uh, with press passes and, and the like so we can get uh, really some good stuff. So I'm really excited uh, for that.